Now, in a surprise turnaround, it seems that after years of cold on-again, off-again ties with Ankara, Turkish President Erdogan is looking to rebuild trust and friendliness with Jerusalem. But why the sudden 180? And how should Israel be responding? Here to discuss is Dr. Nir Boms, research fellow at Tel Aviv University's Moshe Dayan Center. Dr. Boms, thank you so much. Now, why the change and why now? Well, President Erdogan is not in a base of shape. Uh, the uh, currency, the lira, had uh, dropped over 30% this year. Uh, he has been having issues uh, all around the region. Uh, but more so, he's been having issues with Washington. Uh, President Trump has been somewhat more accommodating to his uh, policies, uh, certainly to what he had done uh, you know, in Syria and, and with the Kurds. Um, President uh, Erdogan, sorry, Pr President Biden is not expected to do the same. Uh, he has been a staunch uh, rival of um, President uh, Erdogan. He is not accepting uh, the Turkish policies. Uh, and uh, there are a number of issues on the table, including uh, additional sanctions uh, and uh, additional measures that the U.S. Uh, can take uh, dealing with an ally that's supposed to be an ally and a NATO ally that is acting uh, uh, very much against uh, uh, the interest of other allies in the region. Therefore, uh, President Erdogan is saying this is the time to recalculate and perhaps the road to Washington actually begins in Jerusalem. So what, you know, what is Erdogan ultimately hoping for? What's the end game? And what has Erdogan done recently to put his money where his mouth is? Well, what Erdogan did is uh, a number of statements and also sending uh, his head of intelligence, uh, Pidan, uh, for some meetings in, in Israel. Uh, this is significant. These are significant developments. He also uh, accepted uh, moderate response to the uh, deal with uh, to the agreement, normalization agreement with uh, Morocco. This was just after just a few months ago. We had a very different response when it came to uh, the uh, normalizations with the UAE and Bahrain. So he is indicating uh, that there is a change in tone. Um, another interesting proposal that was sent uh, was regarding the gas pipelines uh, connected to the East Med, and all of a sudden we have a, a Turkish proposal. Perhaps you could use uh, the Turkish infrastructure and, and use Turkey. Not something that Israel would likely do, but it's certainly a, an interesting route that may be cheaper in many ways. Um, and that's another show of goodwill. Um, sending an ambassador uh, to Israel following over two years when we did not have an ambassador here. Uh, these are all significant uh, developments that uh, seems to indicate that Erdogan is interested in a change of course. He also indicated himself uh, in a statement that uh, although he still has reservations about uh, the Israeli uh, policies when it comes to the Palestinian, we need to find a way to work uh, with Israel to advance uh, you know, issues of common cause. That's, in so his words, a, a very significant uh, move. All right. Well, so, you know, I want to I want to ask you, how, how are Turkish people responding to this? Because, of course, he spent Erdogan has spent years turning the public, you know, towards his ideologies. That is true. Uh, and it's not yet clear how the Turks, uh, the Turkish people respond to it. But we need to uh, uh, remember that uh, Israel and Turkey prior to the sure. uh, Erdogan era, or really prior to the second part of the Erdogan era, really only about uh, 12 years ago, uh, Turkey is still considered an ally and a friend. Uh, we've had uh, close to 20 flights uh, a week going to Turkey until relatively recently before the Corona uh, crisis. Yeah. Uh, Turks are familiar with Israelis, uh, with uh, their connections and friendships. Um, and so I don't think that the turning uh, uh, of this nature uh, would be uh, uh, not accepted uh, just generally around uh, the public. It's politics. Well, so let's turn to Israel now, because, you know, how are Israelis going to react? Because it's been reported that after so many years of anti-Israel rhetoric, partnerships with Iran, funding for Hamas, that Israel can and should be playing hard to get. Is, is, that, your, is that your understanding? I, I, I believe that is correct. Uh, Israel has very significant and, and, and acute issues when it comes to uh, the Turkish uh, uh, policies. Uh, certainly, uh, the uh, hosting of uh, Hamas uh, and even just recently uh, Ismail Aniyeh and, of course, uh, Salah Haruri and others, uh, significant uh, Turkish uh, support uh, for the Muslim Brotherhood and related activities in East uh, Jerusalem. Um, anti-Israel uh, rhetoric, yeah. involvement of Turkish organizations in other parts 
uh, in supporting anti-Israel agendas, the BDS movement. Um, all of that uh, means that uh, in the meantime, Israel, of course, had uh, created very significant relations uh, with some of Turkey's own uh, uh, rivals, uh, certainly when it comes to Greece uh, and, and, and Cyprus. Israel, of course, is not going to give that up um, just because Erdogan is now uh, speaking in different terms. Right. Uh, so it's going to be a, a process. I think it's constructive and I think it's useful uh, uh, to have an ambassador and to have better uh, uh, ways to uh, communicate. Um, but of course, Israel is not going to uh, uh, just change its own course um, and accept all of it in open arms if really things are not going to change uh, on the ground. All right, Dr. Nierbohms, thank you so much for joining us. Good to be here.